we'll try every day after the Hebrew Tanakh to, you know, five minutes, ten minutes to summarize what exactly we uh, uh, studied that it will be easier for you and other American students to be with us today, okay? So let's explain where did we start today and what are we going to do, okay? There is a very good point to start the last part of Sefer Melachim. Because in the ninth chapter, Perekte, Yehu, the king of the new uh, destiny of, um, of uh, Melchai Israel, murdered the king of Israel, uh, Israel and the king of Yehuda. Okay, that means it's a very good zero point. point. Okay? Now last year, because of the chapters of Sefer Melachim are trying to synthesize yeah, the, the stories here and there, so therefore, Yes. Therefore, it's um, difficult because you have to you, you read two chapters about Israel, then you go back to Melech Yehuda. Here we decided. Let's first of all learn about Mel all what happened, and we'll skip the chapters about Melech Yehuda. We'll go to Melech Israel. So we studied what happened from this point until the destruction of in the uh, ex uh, ex uh, uh, Galut, uh, expel? Until uh, the, the, uh, the, the diaspora, the, until Melchai Israel were expelled from, uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, and they don't exist anymore, okay, from uh, Eretz Israel, and that we, we studied last year, okay? Today we started from this point, approximately from this point, we started to learn about uh, Melchai Yehuda. Okay, that's what we are start, studying this year, okay? Now, we started with a very, very, very huge crisis that Malchut Yehuda had. It's already after five generations of civil war, murdering kings, uh, def being defeated in wars without a penny because uh, everything was t t t taken out from Memlechet Yehuda without a wall again uh, around Jerusalem because uh, in the last uh, combat they they, lo they lose, uh, they lost, and uh, the king of uh, Israel destroyed the northern part of the wall around. Uh, Jerusalem. So, really, in the deepest point that uh, took part and uh, took place in the history of Mamlechet Yehuda, okay? And from the, 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 the lowest point, the deepest point that they reached, we started to learn about the King Uziyahu. From the first Pasuk, we saw that he was in office for 52 years. That means that the kingdom is stabilized, that it's a great success, you know, to survive for 52 years, it's a great success. But we read in Melachim and in Divrayamim that he was a great, great success. He succeeded to expand the borders of Israel towards the west, towards the east. He defeated the Plishtim from one side, the Ammonim. Um, paid the tax. He uh, built from the beginning the walls. He uh, created, established new settlements all over Yehuda that combined agriculture and security. So it it was a great, great, great success. And the uh, when, if I have to, to draw a line, I'll draw it. You know, if this is the. It, 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 this is the, the X and the Y, yeah? He was this kind, okay? But what we saw that the Pasuk in Sefer Devarimim said because he was so successful, he uh, decided to exaggerate. And he decided to uh, go into the temple, to, into the Beis Amikdash, and to um, to behave there or to, to work there as a Kohen. Now, I explained that our, uh, you know, our constitution, if you can call it that way, is that there are two sources of power, the king and the Kohen. Both of them have a crown, both of them have special uniform, both of them have oil on their head, but this this is only the, the outfit. But when you're talking essential, 
we see that both of them have a, a separate army. There is an army of all the tribes with the king, and Shevet Levi is the army of the Kohen. They have a finance office, completely different. And we read during the Tanakh, it's Otsorot Bet Hashem, yeah, the traitors of uh, the uh, no tortures of uh, Otsorot Bet Hashem and Otsorot Bet Amelech. So they are actually there are two um, authorities that are separate. And that because of the importance that the king will um, balance himself and will put limits on his power and the coin will be related to the holiness, the, the uh, inside uh, ideas, and the, the, there will be two sources of power, okay? Now what happened is that he decided to occupy the base Mikdash and actually to chase the Kohanim out of them and to be responsible and to be, to be the head also of the Beit Mikdash. So the Pasuk says, Uchechezkato, as strong as he was, Gavalibo, you know, he was so proud, Ad Lehashchit. That was his the beginning of the destruction, okay? And then uh, he failed and Hashem uh, made him to be sick with Tzarat and therefore he had to leave uh, the Mikdash, actually to leave also his uh, crown, his uh, Armon, his palace, and he was closed in his uh, private room until, uh, and his son, Yotam, actually uh, controlled the kingdom from this point and, and uh, Vahala, okay? Now, the question that we have, so, how to summarize the bottom line of Uziel? From one side, he was a great tzaddik. Sefer Melachim writes that he was a tzaddik. He was very successful. He really succeeded to promote and to enhance the situation from the bottom line, from the deepest place, and to a very, very high level of success. And the Pasuk says in Sefer Melachim, Vayasa Yashar Ben Hashem, he was considered as a right, righteous, 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 yeah? He was considered as a righteous. From the other hand, the stories that happened in the end of his life are describing the fact that he broke the limits and the, 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 the and he destroyed the gap that should be between the Beit Mikdash and uh, Beit HaMelech. So how to, what's the bottom line? Now we decided not to give an answer today about this year because there's a third source that you can read in Tanakh about Uziyahu. One is Melachim, one is Divrayamim, the third one is Yeshayahu. So tomorrow we are gonna read the chapters in Yeshayahu. First of all, try to identify what chapters in Ishayahu are following Uziyahu's days, because we don't know, there's no title in the uh, chapters between Bet and Hey, Bet Gimel Dalet Vehei, the, the, the four, these four chapters, there, there's a description of a situation in Yehuda, in the kingdom of Yehuda, but we don't know what king, who was the king then, because the, there are no names. I'll claim tomorrow, that those four chapters actually are following Uziyahu. So therefore, they are the th uh, third source that we can learn about Uziyahu. And then we'll have a whole picture and we'll ask again, so what is the bottom line of Uziyahu? Okay? Okay. <laughs>